The Shepherd of Hermas, Visions, Chapter 3. Vision 4, Chapter 3. I asked her about the four colors which the beast had on his head. And she answered and said to me, Again, you are inquisitive in regard to such matters. Yea, lady, said I, make known to me what they are. Listen, she said, the black is the world in which we dwell, but the fiery and bloody points out that the world must perish through blood and fire. But the golden part are you who have escaped from this world. For as gold is tested by fire and thus becomes useful, so are you tested who dwell in it. Those, therefore, who continue steadfast and are put through the fire will be purified by means of it. For as gold casts away its dross, so also will ye cast away all sadness and straightness and will be made pure so as to fit into the building of the tower. But the white part is the age that is to come, in which the elect of God will dwell, since those elected by God to eternal life will be spotless and pure. Therefore cease not speaking these things into the ears of the saints. This, then, is the type of the great tribulation that is to come. If ye wish it, it will be nothing. Remember those things which are written down before. And saying this, she departed, but I saw not into what place she retired. There was a noise, however, and I turned around in alarm, thinking that the beast was coming. Fifth vision, concerning the commandments. After I had been praying at home and had sat down on my couch, there entered a man of glorious aspect dressed like a shepherd, with a white goat skin, a wallet on his shoulders, and a rod in his hand, and saluted me. I returned his salutation, and straightway he sat down beside me and said to me, I have been sent by a, a most venerable angel to dwell with you the remaining days of your life. And I thought that he had come to tempt me, and I said to him, Who are you? For I know him to whom I have been entrusted. He said to, you, to me, Do you not know me? No, said I. I, said he, am that shepherd to whom you have been entrusted. And as he was speaking, his figure was changed, and then I knew that it was he to whom I had been entrusted. And straightway I became confused, and fear took hold of me, and I was overpowered with deep sorrow that I had answered him so wickedly and foolishly, that he answered and said to me, Do not be confounded, but receive strength from the commandments which I am giving, I'm going to give you. For I have been sent, he said, to show you again all the things which you saw before, especially those of them which are useful to you. First of all, then, write down my commandments and similitudes, and you will write the other things as I shall show you. For this purpose, said he, I command you to write down the commandments and similitudes first, that you may read them easily and be able to keep them. Accordingly, I wrote down the commandments and similitudes exactly as he had ordered me. If, then, when you have heard these, ye keep them and walk in them and practice them with pure minds, you will receive from the Lord all that he has promised you. But if, after you have heard them, you do not repent but continue to add to your sins, then shall you receive from the Lord the opposite thing. All these words did the shepherd, even the angel of repentance, command me to write. Chapter 9, the second book, Commandments or Mandates. First commandment, on faith in God. First of all, believe that there is one God who created and finished all things and made all things out of nothing. He alone is able to contain the whole, but himself cannot be contained. Have faith therefore in him and fear him, and fearing him, exercise self-control. Keep these commandments and you will cast away from you all wickedness and put on the strength of righteousness and live to God if you keep this commandment. Second commandment, an avoiding evil speaking and on giving alms and simplicity. He said to me, 
Be simple and guileless, and you will be as the children who know not the wickedness that ruins the life of man. First, then, speak evil of no one, nor listen with pleasure to anyone who speaks evil of another. But if you listen, you will partake of the sin of him who speaks evil. If you believe the slander which you hear, for believing it, you will also have something to say against your brother. Thus, then, will you be guilty of the sin of him who slanders. For slander is evil and an unsteady demon. It never abides in peace, but always remains in discourse. Keep yourself from it, and you will always be at peace with all. Put on holiness in which there is no wicked cause of offense, but all deeds that are equable and joyful. Practice goodness, and from the rewards of your labors which you give, God, give to all the needy in simplicity not hesitating as to whom you are to give or not to give. Give to all, for God wishes his gifts to be shared amongst all. They who receive will render an account to God why and for what they have received. For the afflicted who receive will not be condemned, but they who receive on false pretenses will suffer punishment. He then who gives is guiltless. For as he receives from the Lord, so has he accomplished his service in simplicity, not hesitating as to whom he shall give and to whom he should not give. This service, then, if accomplished in simplicity, is glorious with God. He, therefore, who thus ministers in simplicity, will live to God. Keep, therefore, these commandments as I have given given them to you, that your repentance and the repentance of your house may be found in simplicity, and your heart may be pure and stainless.